Alex, how are you doing? Well, fantastic, man. How are you? I'm all right. It's, it's a bit late in the UK. It's like nearly eight o'clock in the evening. But uh, hey, we've got to decide on my Friday nights. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll start by saying congratulations on the film. It's been a, a, a huge success uh, pre-lockdown and post-lockdown because of the digital release. How how uh, excited, how flattered have you been that people have taken to to this kind of new new interpretation uh, of this of this classic tale? Because everyone seems to have really taken to it. Yeah, which is uh, surprising. I mean, anytime you have a film that is uh, you know loved by the fans, I mean, for me that's a success. That's all you can ask, you know. Um, I, I was actually really surprised how people gravitated more towards it um, even after the theaters were shut down. I was really grateful for that because, you know, that's the thing we worry about, like, uh, how are we going to get it, you know, to the people? But it just seems like people are like, all right, we'll just download it on, the, you know, and rent it at home. And, and it didn't slow anything down. So I was really happy about that. But people love this film, man. And uh, it's, it's a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I, I can imagine that's great when that happens. That it's a, you know, it's a movie that you hope is going to be good, but then when it when it kind of sticks in people's conscious yeah, and they yeah. kind of go back to it, it's kind of even more rewarding in that sense, isn't it? Yeah, man. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's, my film and it's like, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a big uh, big risk in, in different ways when you're introducing a new way to experience uh, the horror genre. Um, you're introducing different types of, of tech, you know. And for me, it was sort of a surefire bet because it's Lee Wannell, Blumhouse, it's Universal. It's like, this is what they do. But you can never get too comfortable. Um, and, and also, you know, when we have Elizabeth starring, it was like, all right, I feel really good about this. You know, it, we would have to massively mess up to fail. But still with that, I'm really impressed with how great it came out. And I'm really, I love the quality of it. I love how people have really uh, responded to it. What was it about Lee's kind of take on this that, that in, in, att attracted you to it? Because he could have quite easily just made a, a, a remake of the original, you know, gone for the invisible man as we, as we know him. But he really took it and really had something original and very important to say with the, the movie in the context yeah. of a horror film. I mean, what was it that kind of sold you on this concept? Uh, a few things. Uh, one, primarily, I think was just the risk on the narrative. You know, we're not being led around by the quote unquote, the villain or the, the actual invisible man. We are being led by Cecilia and her journey and her response to this terror. I think that there's a message that was coupled with this in terms of a woman who is stuck in this perilous situation and she has to fight for her own strength and value and sanity and she actually does. I love that message. And then you pair it with, you know, the 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 flash and the pop of the you know the invisible man aspect of it. And uh the way that they were gonna show it and distribute it and and, and shoot it, there was an exciting uh sort of nuanced way that I hadn't really seen really distributed or performed before when it came to horror. So, so there's, there's a lot of new things here and a lot of new elements that I'd love to be a part of. Plus, I haven't really been in the horror genre and to be in it in this way with such a classic, you know, uh, uh, film. For me, I was like, uh, let me let me take the risk, you know? But again, it's Lee Wan now. I mean, he, you know, he, I was a big fan of his soft series and also a, a fan of Upgrade. And the style that he brought to Upgrade, which is what he brought to this, I thought it's just, it was a really cool way to watch or, you know, experience this kind of, uh, this kind of deal. Oh, Upgrade, so good. So, so good. Such a great film. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to, obviously we're talking about, the film's been out for a while now, so I think it's, yeah. it's safer to talk about sort of the, the ending, if you like, not to go into specifics, but what was your kind of takeaway from, when you read the ending for the first time, because obviously James is 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 kind of part of that ending because he's there and he sees what is happening yeah. or maybe maybe is not happening. I mean, you must it must be uh, a great thing to see an ending that's kind of it, 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 you can take different things from from the ending no matter, yeah. in terms of what you see when you watch the film. Yeah, well, I can't really say too much on the ending, you know, because um, it's still some folks who haven't really seen it the yeah. ending yet. But I will say that. I was happy when I read it because I said, oh, okay, James is a real one. Oh, yeah, you're a real one. Because <laughs> in Cecilia, they have a longstanding friendship. And the the thing I love about their relationship throughout this whole 
you know, crazy journey is that they are still down for each other. They're still friends, still trying to protect each other, even in the midst of everything that may seem unbelievable. Uh, James is still trying to figure out how to be there for her. And we get to see that in the end when, yet again, he's like, all right, I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to ride with you. So, yeah, James is a real one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I did just want to ask something separate to this because I'm such a huge fan of the movie, but it's this year marks 25 years of Die Hard with a Vengeance, which was one of your, <laughs> if not one of your first, if not your first foray into into mm. cinema it's it's such it a great good. film die hard three and you get to spend some time with samuel l jackson as a as a kid yeah. not only to yeah. be in that film but to be around samuel l jackson i mean that must have been such a great experience what are your, your kind of memories you've you've kind of um, kept with you from that crazy enough my brother edwin hodge who was also in die hard with avengers with me let me know i think like yesterday that was a 25 year uh anniversary and i was like oh i'm old okay I get it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think I think it was like uh, like my second film, and honestly, I didn't know who Sam or Bruce Willis were, were because I wasn't allowed to watch their movies. I was only eight years old. You know, I am not watching Pulp Fiction at eight. <laughs> you know, <my laughs> was, but Sam was a cool cat. Gave us a, a couple of gems in terms of how to shape up our acting career. Gave my mom some advice about my brother and I, like really wanting to, if we really want to understand acting, we have to get on stage. And oddly enough, after Die Hard, we had an audition for a Broadway play called Showboat. And uh, we actually ended up working on that Broadway play. Um, after Die Hard, Sam did another movie called Long Kiss Goodnight, where he hired my brother to play his son. So I played his nephew, and my brother played his son. So yeah, you know, it, it was really cool. You got, got a lot of great early memories working with Sam. And, uh, and Bruce was really cool. So yeah fantastic well listen thank you so much for your time absolute pleasure talking to you and uh and uh, yeah good luck with everything and stay safe thank you thank you for your time Thanks, as well man. brother ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey, you guys. is yeah. that from the goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice hey, hey.